united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, everybody. We welcome you today on the show United with Christ. I'm your host for today, Pastor Susano Cruz Jr. of El Paso First Assembly. I'm here joined with my lovely wife, Jennifer Carrillo, and we're so happy to be here this morning. And so we've got a good show for you. I'm, I'm glad you tuned in, and you're going to hear a good word from God, not because it's coming from here, but because it's coming from the Holy Spirit. Uh, we've been praying about uh, just themes and topics to bring to the show. We take what God has called us to do real seriously. And so we go into prayer and say, God, what do you, what do you want us to, to say to your people and so today we're excited for that because we got something to share for you. And so um, we're going to get ready um, to pray. But before we do that, our prayer line is open. We have brought people to pray for any needs that you have. So we encourage you, if you want your prayer request, uh, uh, pray for on the air at the end of the show. Call in now to get that uh, to us. You see the number there on your screen, um, 915-532-8518. And so call in. And we want to pray with you, and those prayer lines are already open. We're here to serve you. So this morning, Jennifer is going to greet you, and then she's going to open up with prayer here today. Hello, El Paso and Las Cruces. We're glad you're joining us here today. Isn't it a good thing that we have a loving Savior who cares and loves for us? So, Heavenly Father, we just come to you today, Lord God. We just want to worship you and honor you with, with truth, Lord God. We just ask that your Holy Spirit be with us as we speak your word, Lord God. Allow it to soften up our hearts, open up our eyes, open up our ears, Lord God. For it is you that we desire. It is you that straight puts us on the straight path, oh Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your love that continues to mold and shape us. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so today, uh, we're going to just talk to you on the topic of transformed. And, um, you know, sharing with, with uh, my wife, Jennifer, we just kind of... You know, we've been talking in our church about pursuing God and, uh, you know, that pursuit of, of following the move of God, following the Holy Spirit in everyday lives, just everywhere we're at. One of the things that during that search and I guess the pursuit of God, one of the things that started to embark in my heart and, and kind of in Jennifer's because she was sharing uh, with me and kind of came to today's topic of being transformed was we the church, and I know a lot of people watching Channel 38 out there reviewing. Some people, um, majority are saved, churchgoers. That's why you've tuned into this channel. That's why you're tuned into to this TV, good station that produces good programming, clean. And so we know that you're saved. And one of the things that as we minister to every church member, every pastor, every leader out there, um, one of the things that has really bothered me because I've been raised up in the church uh, pretty much all my life. My mom dedicated me from uh, the womb on out. God had a call in my life. And, you know, I've been in church. And you can call me a typical church boy. I've been in church all pretty much my life, 41 years. And um, one of the things that I've seen the trends of church, I've seen the different ways of church. Um, I love to go in and visit different churches and seeing what's going on. Um, and then just come to my conclusions and seeing as a senior pastor, um, my heart is so people can encounter God, experience God, um, and be transformed by God. One of the things that is just at the foundation of everything that as I'm pondering during this series of uh, Transformed, um, one of the things is we are in a day and age, a time, a uh, church, that there is the most churches being opened ever that are open in the United States. That at any other point in time, we're in the 2017, that the ch there's more churches open. There's more books being written on uh, Christian themes, on the Holy Spirit, uh, books on Christian living, um, more now than ever before. There are more Christian songs that are being written, produced um, than ever before in the history of, of the world. But the world it looks nothing like it should, which is telling me that we're not influencing the world. And more that I see is that the world has started to creep in and influence more the church than the church influencing the world. And, you know, when I, when I look at that, that that's an issue um, because the Bible talks about it. You know, don't take my word. And I'm not one of those guys, uh, one of those pastors that's going to say, because I'll share with you a little bit today. 
Um, we're not one of those just fire and brimstone or, you know, one extreme or the other. Um, but there has to be a perfect balance in life um, and even with the word of God. And so we always go to the word of God, which is unmovable, unshakable, unfallible in every kind of way, shape or form. So I want Jennifer to read Romans 12, 1, uh, 12, 2, I'm sorry. And it's going to show you what God's word says, not our word. God's word says about us being in this world. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. He is good, pleasing, and a perfect will. Amen. And so when we see that, um, do not be, the Bible says, conformed. Conformed means shaped. It means the world molding you. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Now, that word transformed is not changed, okay? Because changed, like you change a shirt, okay? And you change it every day, right? Um, you can always go back to that shirt eventually. That's changing, okay? Transformed is never going back. And the analogy that I'll use is like a caterpillar. A caterpillar, um, once it is transformed into a butterfly, never again, will it go back to being a caterpillar? It leaves one state of being and it transforms into a butterfly and forevermore never goes back. And, you know, when we talk about the church and we talk about what God has called us to do and everything that we see, um, we got to understand something. Are we being transformed by God and by his Holy Spirit or are we just changing? Um, and, and, and to that effect... We got to be influencing the world. We got to be, and I understand um, some of the things that uh, we kind of get is to, uh, we, we, we try to allow God into our lives, but we just don't want God to change a lot of things, transform a lot of things, um, because people get caught up where we say, hey, stay the same. But Second Corinthians, Paul's talking to the church in Corinth, and he's telling them something very key. Um, and, and I want you to read that, Jennifer, in Second Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come and the old has gone and the new is here. Amen. Um, you know, that's a powerful statement because he says, if there's anybody in Christ, you are a new creation, a new creature. And, and so sometimes we want to be in Christ with the old habits, the old person. Um, and many churches now get caught up. And, and, and again, I'm not trying to battle the church. You got to understand my heart. My heart is the church needs to influence the world. Because this world needs a lot of Jesus. This world needs a lot. And so when we go and we look at that, we got to ask ourselves, pastors, leaders, people in church, we got to ask ourselves, are we being changed or are we being transformed? And one of the things churches will say um, many times is come as you are. And absolutely, absolutely. We know we don't expect perfect people coming into church. We're never perfect. Um, I'm glad that Jesus accepted me as I was. Come as you are. Um, but a lot of times we'll use that to cater to get people in, in the church. Come as you are, don't worry. Um, you know, if, if you're doing this and this is a sin and all this, and yes, that's, that's a great, uh, we have to have that heart. Uh, don't misunderstand me. But the church cannot allow them to stay as they are. Um, come as you are, but be ready for God to change your heart, your life. And, and that's some things that we do. Come as you are, stay as you are, and just stay comfortable. Um, but I'm thankful that God accepted me as, as I was, but I'm just thankful that he changed me. He transformed me. He transformed and changed my life. I'm nothing like I was 20 years ago um, because God transformed my life. So we got to get to that point. Jennifer, what do you think? Love and correction comes together. And I mean, thankful when I come to know the Lord that there was correction and there was wisdom because within that, it allowed me to grow in a different level and it allowed me to see some of the things that needed to be chiseled away from my life because then I realized I don't want to be like the Israelites, continue doing the same thing over and over again, thinking it's okay when it's not, and be stuck in the wilderness for 40 years. I want to get to the promised land. I want to have my relationship to continue to grow and desire and love what Christ is loving and desiring for me to have. I don't want to love the things of the world that's going to keep me stagnant. I want to be able to go forth in God's love and his word to grow as a believer, as a child of the living God. It's like a garden. You water it and you start to see the flowers grow. You start to see the leaves turn green. 
I love going back in my backyard and just enjoying God's creation, but I need to take care of it and I need to water it and prune it and shape it just as God has to prune and correct me in areas that I need in my life in order to become the child that he desires me to be. Because if I don't prune my garden, I don't water it, it starts to brown, it starts to fall away and it brings forth death. And I don't want death in my life. And I want those who come to church not to stay stagnant, be uh, parked behind a parked car. You want to be able to move forward and grow in Christ, to be able to show forth fruit that blossoms not only in your life, but those that are around us. Amen. So we believe, come as you are, if it's broken, with whatever dysfunction and addictions, but have it in your heart not to stay there. I love the story of God and his redemption process where come as you are, but leave changed, leave whole. Um, you know, God changed people. When Jesus was here, he changed their lives. They didn't stay as they were. Um, when, when we came to that point, you know, sometimes we'll misinterpret grace. And um, yes, you know, people will say, well, you know, God knows my heart or I'm trying. Um, but when you really look at the core and when you really look at grace, sometimes the Bible says you got to read what his word says because we can misinterpret things. And even out of the goodness of our heart, um, I love people. Come as you are. Exactly. Come what, whatever f dysfunctions you have. Come as you are. We're not here to judge. And again, does it, we're not here to judge people, look at people. We're here to let people experience God. And when people experience God, they look at how much they need a savior. At a point in time when I experienced God, I realized I need a Savior. I need help. And Jesus came, and he changed my life. And that was the first conversion that I had was Jesus changing my life. But then it didn't stay there. I didn't stay stuck in that place. Yes, there is grace, but grace, let me, let me tell you something. Grace never weakens you. That's not grace. Grace empowers you. And Paul was talking. I'm going to go again to God's word. I'm going to give you a lot of word more, more normally than I do because I want you to see by God's word in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 8, 9. Very key because Paul's struggling here. And, and here's what the Lord is telling him in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 8 and 9. He says, three times I pleaded with the Lord. And he's saying to take it away from me. But he, the Lord, said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. In other words, the weaknesses that we have, that's when we go to God and he'll give us grace through his Holy Spirit to change, to get through that situation, to get through that problem, not to stay stuck in that problem. And so that's sometimes where we get, oh, well, God knows my heart and I'm trying. No, you know what? God says, look, in your weakness, I know you're weak. He's saying, but give it over to me, not continue in it, but give it over to me. And my grace will be sufficient for you because it's going to help you get through it. So we're going to take a pause right now, go to our worship time. And we've been talking about being transformed here in, on United with Christ, being transformed, meaning, you know, we understand so much about grace. Grace empowers. Grace doesn't weaken you. Grace doesn't give you an excuse to stay there. And, and many times we do that. We tell people, it's okay, just continue, just keep trying. Um, but... I believe when you have a true encounter with God, it transforms you, changes you. And like the Bible says, you're a new creation, you're a new creation, and you're not going back to the old things. And one of the things that we want the church to just really understand, if we can grab to the point where we are looking different from the world, um, I, I don't, the Bible says we are in this world, but not of it. And there has to be a separation. There has to be a distinction, a difference. Uh, people in church uh, are not perfect. People in church got issues. But we have the Holy Spirit. Um, the Bible says in this world you're going to have trouble. Um, but be ye of good cheer. For I, Jesus, has overcome the world. And if Christ be in you, the hope of glory, you have that ability. So we want to get into a place where we are moving, being transformed um, by God and by his power. Uh, we're going to read Romans uh, 6, 1 because many times... Like I read, when Paul was struggling, uh, the Bible says, hey, my grace is sufficient. He says, I asked God three times to take it away. And he said, no, my grace is sufficient. My grace is enough because my grace is going to be made perfect in your weakness. So we, God understands we have weaknesses, but he doesn't want us to stay there. He wants us to give him our weakness, and God will give us grace to get out of that weakness so we can be strong in that area, and it's no longer weakness in our area. He never gave us grace to stay there. Grace empowers, never weakens. Jennifer, I want you to read Romans chapter 6, 1. Listen to what God's word says. 
What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. That is, shall we continue in sin just because there's grace? God forbid that. Um, that's not what he designed grace for. And the world will twist it. Sometimes even the church will twist it to make people comfortable. I'm all for people. I'm a people person. I love people. But I know what God has done on the cross for you and that power to change. One of the things that, that stands out to me, Jennifer, just so much is the story about the woman caught in adultery brought to Jesus. We have two extremes here. We have the religious people, the religious party that said, look, Jesus, here she is, stoner, killer. That's one extreme, right? The fire and brimstone. Hey, preach that everybody's going to hell. Preach that. Yes, that's part of the gospel, but there's the balance. What I talked about, the balance. Jesus said, look, nobody's perfect here. I understand she has a weakness, an issue. So while everybody was getting ready to stone or kill her, Jesus said, he without, the first, without sin, throw the first stone. In other words, you're no greater than her. You know what? We all have issues. And I understand that. We all do. Just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean I don't have issues. Just because Jennifer's a first lady doesn't mean she doesn't have issues. We have issues, um, but we have a grace that empowers us to change. And what God told, what Jesus told her was, was key. He said, woman, where are your accusers? And he says, so then we're not going to accuse you. You know what? But he told her something key. He didn't say, hey, I'm going to give you grace. Stay where you are. I know your heart. Just continue. But he told her something key. Go and sin no more. Stop what you're doing. I'm giving you grace that will change, help you change, help you change your mentality, help you change your lifestyle, not to stay there, lady. He said, go and sin no more. And the church has to get back to telling people, okay, there's a sin. We're going to deal with it. We're going to pray over it. We're going to ask God to heal it, restore redemption. That's God's great plan. But don't stay there. The church is stuck. We cannot keep people stuck. we got to allow them to be transformed because if there's no distinction between us and the world, if we're doing the same things that the world's doing, why come to church? It just becomes a religious event. It just becomes a society, a club where we all just come and we gather as a social club. There has to be a, a difference. Yeah, we make mistakes, but God is giving us grace to change. Go and sin no more. And so we got to get that back in our heart. What do you think, Jennifer? You know, loving them is not leaving you where you are. As a mother and as a father, our children we love them. We care about them. And when they do wrong, we're there to correct them because we want the best for them. We want them to get to levels that God has called them to be in their own calling. But if we allow them to continue to have grace and let them continue to do the same error in life over and over again, they'll never get to the level that has God has called them to be. So when you say the word love, as Christ loves us, it's just as a parent, you love your child and you want the best for them. So you're going to help mold and shape them so they can be profitable, that they can go out forth and be the child that God has created them to be. You know, not loving a child, you just allow them to stay in that place right. and allow them to never be fruitful. God wants us to be fruitful. That's right. You know, I love the analogy that Jennifer used where she says, hey, um, with our children, you know, many times I have uh, two, uh, three teenagers in my house, our house, right? And we're dealing with that. You know, we're dealing with shaping and molding, you know, train up a child in the way they should, all these things. But it goes like that as being a pastor too, because you have sheep that have come and they come from all different, you know, things going on in their lives, different levels, different places with God. But, you know, we want to get them to a higher place with God, a, a, an encounter with God. And sometimes people say, I struggle with if it's stealing cheating, uh, whatever it is that they're struggling with. But I always go back to what God's word says. And God's word says it real clearly in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He says, I will not tempt you. I am faithful. He says, but I will not tempt you so much that you cannot bear it. God will provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. God is saying, look, um, I'm not going to give you temptation that you can't deal with it. But many times, we get caught up and we know God will forgive us, so let's keep doing it. God will forgive us. Let's keep doing it. God will forgive us. And, and that becomes insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting something different. That's crazy. Um, you know, we know God will forgive us and we keep doing it. But God's word says, hey, shall we continue in our sin that grace may abound? God forbid, don't do it. We got to get to a place where we are being changed and transformed. Robert Morris, 
senior pastor of Gateway Church, one of the biggest churches. I love what he said in his series, Free Indeed. He says, many times people struggling with the sin keep going over and over. He says, but they, they do not understand repentance because when you repent, you turn away. You stop doing it. Um, he says, but sometimes we sometimes may have to be delivered because we keep doing that same thing again and again. God wants to change you. He left the Holy Spirit to help us um, and to, to work with us to, uh, you know, change us. So um, there's just not enough time to just be talking about all these things. But I would just want us to get to a place, I think, where the church is is really allowing working with the Holy Spirit to transform people's lives and change them. You know, also another part as followers and leaders in the church is just not the pastor or the pastor's wife or the deacon's job. As people in church, the older women are supposed to be teaching the younger women. The older men are supposed to be teaching the younger men. And I know sometimes it's hard to correct and instruct the younger generation, but when you work out in order to develop muscle, it's going to take some pain. It's going to take some structure in order to grow in those muscles. Not all the time are you going to be these uh, younger women and younger men's best friend at times, but in the long run, they will thank you for the words of encouragement and guidance and shaping. We as an older generation need to step into what God has called us to go out and make disciples, teach them what is wrong, teach them what is right, not to leave them just in that grace period. There needs to be a molding and a shaping. Amen. And, and that's what we're called as a church with the Holy Spirit, as pastors, to, to train up and to lead. You know, uh, I'm going to close with Philippians 1, 6, where it says that God will finish. He who begun a good work in you will complete it. If he wants us to stay the same way, why is he going to complete a work? In other words, we're unfinished products. And, yes, what I struggle with today is not what I struggled with 20 years ago. It's a process. Um, God's going to complete it, and he's working it out. But I'm thankful that my wife has been with me in this journey for over 20 years as married. And, uh, yeah, there's things that God still needs to work in my heart, but I'm not the same who I was. She surely wasn't the same person. It's not that she just changed. She's transformed. She no longer looks like, you know, that baby Christian so many times, so many years ago. So there's that process. I encourage you, pastor, leader, let's start working with the people and the Holy Spirit to change hearts, to change lives. Um, and let the church stand out, be glorious, not judging people, but changing people through the Holy Spirit of God. Let's influence the world one person at a time. Let's make a difference. God bless you. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you, and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSCE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903. Or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours. Or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.